Wa Kwan, hello, how to do? How are you all doing? This is the Mekwe Talk channel. The spotlight is on Willie Agard. Mekwe find out who this famous Jamaican man was and if he was indeed a legend. But before we go further into the video, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to reading your opinion in the comment section below. Willie Agard's name seemed to be a famous name throughout Jamaica and his status as a famous Jamaican was not in the class of a Usain Bolt, Oliver Samuels or Bob Marley, yet he was branded a legend. And a special dance, the Willie Bounce, was named in his honor. Many younger generation ask, who was Willie Agard since they were born after he had exited the land of the living? Or they were children? when he reigned in Arnett Gardens, a garrison community popularly known as Jungle. There is division in people's perception of the Don Willie Agard. There is true information, such as his legal name is William Augustus Moore, and he entered the world on the 14th of March, 1961. Had he been alive, he would have celebrated his 63rd birthday in March 2024. And yes, he officially married his longtime girlfriend, a lady named Angela Moore, popular known as Little Miss. And together they have two children. Willie Agard was rightly born in Trenchtown, but immigrated to take up permanent residence in Arnett Gardens when his mother bought a house in what is deemed to be a volatile ghetto community in Kingston 13. In dissecting the true reality of who Willie Agard was, it has to be established that this man has multi personalities. And how William Moore got the nickname Agard, which means the art of a pig, or a more vulgar term Jamaican say Ag. In other words, it suggests Willie Agard was cold hearted as a boy transitioning into a teenager. He was very troublesome, always getting into violent fights and showed no remorse for his actions. Willie Agard, in his teens to early twenties, emulates the desire to be a gangster after becoming a foot soldier for a renowned gangster named General Starkey. It is said Willie Agard was branded as a bad man, gunman, when he saved the life of his mentor, General Starkey. The story is that he spotted men coming to shoot up Starkey. Agard quickly opened fire on the gunmen, which resulted in their demise. General Starkey's right name was Anthony Tingles, who was the leader of the Wild Bunch Posse back then. It is well known that after General Starkey was murdered in 1981, Willie Agard migrated to the States, where his true nature led him to link up with King Dang and the Spangler's Posse. This is the interesting part. Oh, Willie Agard returned to his hometown as a multi-millionaire. The most dominating rumor that sticks is that Willie Agar's sister had an affair with a Colombian drug smuggler when she learned the secret of their drugs and hiding place. Just like Delilah, she told her brother Willie Agard and her nephew the secret place of the Colombian drugs and money which they stole and by various means of disguising brought the money into Jamaica. Willie Agar's sister was brutally murdered as a consequence of her betrayal and just like in the mob movie, the Colombians put a contract it on Willie Agar's head. Willie Agard returned to Jamaica in 1993 as a very rich man in the ghetto of jungle. He invested big. He opened haberdasheries, grocery stores, bars, 
nightclubs he bought trailers and many luxury cars willie agard was then the man he controls that section of the ghetto community by hiring many unemployed youths putting on treats for children and organizing and promoting dances for the community using popular sound system at that time like stone love metro media and bloodline his status was upgraded to being the community done and politicians formalized it by calling him area leader he was a rooted pmp supporter and said to have benefited from many government contracts issued out in that community with his popularity and money he was like a god to the youths in the community and with his true nature of being a bad man and a gangster that power worsened his personality his masculine ego was huge he spoke in a deep commanding and dictator like tone of voice and frequently used profanity to bring across his point he disrespected many people and often beat up anyone who violated his commands or disagreed with him he was a big show-off and often flaunts his riches willie agard was a fashion icon and dressed himself in the latest expensive style and jewelry he liked to go to dances with an entourage of men in his newest model bmw sports car and though he was a married man it is alleged he had multiple affairs with women especially teenage girls who were vulnerable and their parents had to remain silent in fear of biting the dust which resulted in him fathering over 20 and counting children his wife little miss never publicly showed signs of being depressed over agard's infidelity as it was said she enjoyed the limelight of being the first lady of the gangster and living up the gangster paradise lifestyle it is rumored that willie agard also used his money to buy guns for the youths in that volatile community to protect his turf as a real gangster would there is the other side of agar that people come to know from video footage of him on various social media platform dancing laughing and just having fun that side of his personality was brought out when he was invited by gerald bogo levy to join the black roses crew in the mid 90s willie agard and bogle promoted the black roses crew on the corner of lincoln crescent avenue to an international level attracting many local artists like beanie man bujo bantan barrington levy at black roses corner bogle invented many dance moves that live on to this day it was the chill spot for agard bogle and the crew black roses corner was also a monumental spot for video shoots like beanie man's world dance and barrington levy work at a music video one would think that with widespread fame riches and respect from the community and government officials willie agard would have a level of humbleness but humbleness was an understatement his erratic temper flares frequently when he is off the dance floor video light and unbeknown to him his enemies mounted from within his circle and outside it was said he had a heated altercation with the late former prime minister edward siaga at a football match where he hurled some colorful jamaica language at the elder statesmen which tivoli gardner bad men see as a huge violation of their chief and commander tivoli garden is also deemed a volatile community and a tribalistic stronghold of the jamaica labor party
on that fateful afternoon on the 18th of April 2001 on Lincoln Crescent outside his supermarket, Willie Agard was chatting with two of his friends, Black Dutch, whose real name was Albert Banner, and Big Bunny, whose real name was Ned Hines, when a Toyota car pulled up to them. Three men came out of the car and identified themselves as police, then immediately opened fire at them. Willie Aga tried to run away, but one of the gunmen followed and emptied his gun all over Willie Aga's body, taking out his right eye completely. The police impersonators then quickly fled the scene. Willie Agard and his two friends were pronounced dead. The aftermath of Willie Agard's brutal murder flared up a war between Tivoli and Jungle in which over a dozen persons lost their lives. It was believed that it was Tivoli gunmen who murdered Agard for disrespecting Edward Siaga two days before the incident at a football match. But Tivoli was fierce in their defense. Later, they withdraw from warring with Tivoli as they were looking into the fact that Willie Agat got a call a couple days before his murder from an informant telling him to hide all his illegal guns on the turf as the police were coming to raid. So it seemed like a traitor was among the organized gangsters. Then news surfaced that it was the Colombians who orchestrated the hit. Willie Agat had so many enemies, they were confused about who really took him out. It is a known fact that many residents celebrate in silence and were happy that he was gone. Willie Agard's funeral was like a state funeral which was held at the National Arena. The estimated mourners were estimated to be 5,000, among which were government officials from the then ruling PMP party. Dr. Omar Davis, the finance minister, Dr. Carl Blight, the national water minister, Peter Phillips, transport minister, and other government officials, which sparks public criticism of the Association of Politicians and Dance. Like his extravagant lifestyle was his funeral, such as the designer steel casket that was imported from the States, Mercedes Benz used as hers and limousine to drive his immediate family. There was a host of celebrities such as Beanie Man Bogle, the Black Roses crew, and his good friend Ken Don, who made the mourners cheer when he made entrance to view Willie Agard's body. He was laid to rest in the Calvary Cemetery near his hometown of Arnett Garden. Do you believe William Willie Agard Moore is a legend?